All right, what's up, everybody? Let's uh, let's try this one more time. Uh, let me see if I can get Dead Seventy Seven in here. All right, they're invited to join. Ah, ah. what is there? It? We go. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good, filling in for Jason today. Sorry, it's a little hectic. I got to do this holding my own phone because I don't have the cool, the cool rig that Jason does to run this interview. So it's all good. It's all good. We'll make the best of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're the guinea pig twice, right? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, were the, uh, official first interview, exact almost a year ago now. So yeah, just under a year. I was just on the phone with Jason. We were talking about that. So yeah. So so it's cool to be back after a year, um, just because so much has changed within that year. So it's it's really cool. Right on, right on. A lot, lot of lot of new new uh, new things going on with the band, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. We got a, a few things in the works. Oh, um, hold that real quick before yeah. we get started. Before we get started, for our new listeners and people who didn't get to see you last time, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, the band that you're in? What position you are in the band and yeah go from there so my name is jorge i sing for dead 77 um i've been in the band since the beginning i guess you could say officially 2016 um and here we are now nice nice um i've i've been listening to y'all for for a hot minute now so it's uh definitely cool i can't wait to see y'all live in atlanta yeah um um, we're, we're, so what what new uh new news do you have for dead 77 that's coming up in 2023 um so we're going to 40 fest uh this year yeah for sure <laughs> last year um i got hit with the covid uh so we had to cancel i, I didn't want to be responsible for getting anyone sick and um you know i made the call to to not show and uh, it was a little heart wrenching, man. I was super stoked on it, and we've been wanting to play Atlanta for a very long time. So, um, you know, we're happy that, that most of COVID's, you know, chilled out, and we're all healthy and ready to get on that plane and make our, you know, first appearance out in Atlanta and make it count. I mean, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna fucking bring it. So, it, it's it's gonna be great to be on stage out there. Yeah, COVID. Does definitely screwed up um a lot of stuff last year um i'm funny and, and the episode that i, I rewatched uh your and jason's episode before before we did this and a lot of what you were we were discussing was what the fuck was going on with covid and how because we were just coming off the lockdowns and all that and how it affected bands and touring so that was a not really stuff we got to worry about these days anymore because everybody's either vaccinated or has gotten it so many times they're immune. Right, right. Um, so th this should be a good festival. And as far as other festivals, you're on Rebellion Fest as well in yeah. England, right? Yep. So we, yeah. um, so we played – shortly after we played Crash Fest in Portland, I got the email confirmation that we were on for next year. So that was uh, super, super exciting for us. Um, I mean – funny story back it relates back to covid is that i ended up catching covid on the way back from england um but luckily enough i was um asymptomatic for that one um but i wore a mask and you know i stayed away from everyone and no one else got sick so um it was good that as soon as i got home i was like you know what? i'm just gonna wear a mask just in case mm -hmm. i don't know what you know what I'm going to get, or if I caught something, I won't know for a couple of days. So, uh, you know, I wore a mask and no one else got sick. So that was, that was great. But yeah, we have rebellion next year. Um, super excited because, um, at the same time we were, we were fortunate and lucky enough to be picked up by a booking agent in Europe. So that kind of opened the doors for a, you know, more opportunities for us in Europe. Mm -hmm. You're going to do more than just Rebellion Fest if you go over there? Oh, yeah. Next year is jam-packed in the summer. Um, we're going to be uh, our tour. So the tour starts July 21st, and we're going to be in eastern Germany 
um, at a festival called Back to the Future, um, which is very exciting. Uh, our buddies, the Drowns, played, and they told us how great it was. And so we're really excited to start, you know, uh, to start our tour. It, it's going to yeah, be. Yes, so you're going to tour around and then end at Rebellion Fest? That's the plan, but we're still kind of working out, a, you know, there's one more festival that happens after Rebellion. And so we're trying to work to hopefully try and jump on that. Um, you mm -hmm. know, we, we told our agent, you know, um, dude, whatever's best for the band, if that means we have to travel back from the UK to Europe, then be it, you know, we, we have to make this run count. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just talking to friends of mine here in Atlanta that were talking about going over to Europe uh, to tour at some point next year, Rotten Stitches. So I don't know, maybe coordinate with them and y'all's paths can cross. Right. Right. Yeah. In, at some in point, a foreign then, country would be kind of yeah. cool, you know? Um, but yeah, so I've always wanted to go to Rebellion Fest and I know it's like completely different than festivals in America where it's like, you know, one venue that you're there all day. Right. Um, for those of us who've never been, what is like, how do they, I mean, that's a lot of bands, right? Right. And I hear it's just all over the place. Yeah. It's amazing, man. I mean, it's crazy. I guess it's just like, I, Rebellion Festival is so amazing in the sense of like you leave the U.S. and go to another country, but then you still see your same friends out there, which mm -hmm. makes the experience like even better because you don't feel alone and everyone's so welcoming. Like it, I've never had a bad year at Rebellion, and this yeah. is I think fourth time going. So it's 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 probably the greatest festival I've been at. Yeah, hands down. If well, not most one festivals of the best ones. Most festivals are very, very welcoming um, as far as, like, the community of people that are there year after year. Uh, like, Muddy Roots, that's a good one. CY Fest, when I went out there for the first time last year, but it was super nice. Um, right. You know, you know, I mean, we're punks, so, you know, you kind of, you know, unless you're out there being a dick, you know, you're going to have a pretty good time. So. Right, right. Um, what would you suggest someone does if they do want to go to rebellion fest how 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 is it as a uh, tour experience man wear good shoes wear good feet. shoes yeah your feet are gonna fucking hurt man so for so, sure a lot of a lot of walking yeah and then they it's a lot of cobblestone so it's like that shit fucks your feet up man i went with slip-ons the first year and my feet were just fucking beat so I was like, oh, I'm never doing that again. So, you know, I wore boots and then I wore the, uh, the grandpa fucking bands with like the cushy, uh, foot soles. So the cushy inserts. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm at, at that point, man, where I'm like, Oh, I got to wear the uh, comfy shoes now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. But, but I mean, if you get a chance, if you have, you know, the money and the opportunity to fly and, you know, spend the whole week out there, fucking do it. It, it is so worth it. It is so worth it. Yeah, money money is always a big thing when it comes to uh, people traveling from festival to festival because, um, you know, every location, every festival has a different, you know, cost of do, basically doing business. So, like, while a beer at one festival is super expensive, you know, plane tickets or entry costs someplace else is super expensive. Right. And, um, yeah, I kind of forgot where I was going with that, but <laughs> anyway. So, uh, you I, you got a new member this year? Uh, yeah. So, um, our one of our, I guess you could say, original guitar players. Our, um, he he left he left the band. Um, who is Mike? He's on the record for Demons. He uh, he stepped away, and we brought in Carlos. Um, straight. Uh, I guess you thrasher kid. I mean, he's definitely into the metal and rock and roll uh, thrash. Uh, really great guitar player. Super great energy. Um, he's in a lot of the uh, the newer footage, just going wild on stage. Mm -hmm. and that guy, that guy's so super fucking photogenic. Like he looks like something out of some fucking seventies rock and roll poster. And but he's super great. Right. Super great at playing and. Um, yeah, he brings the energy, man, on stage, and 
it kind of pump, it pumps me up and it pumps everybody else on stage up. So it's, it's definitely great. Yeah. I've seen a lot of y'all's videos of live performances. Y'all do have a, a very good presence. Um, uh, seems like you have a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely excited to see y'all live. Yeah. Um, um, hopefully multiple times, hopefully again in rebellion fest. Cause I do want to try to go out there, um, to Europe next, next year for, for vacation. And, you know, also might as well go when there's a big festival. So, right. Yeah. And I think the way I see it too, like, um, you know, growing up and watching other bands and like just taking notes, like no matter what, someone's paying to watch you. Right. So mm -hmm. it's really, do you want to be just that band? that's like, Oh, they're on stage. And it's just like, all right, cool. Next song. Or do you want to leave an impact get fucking wild and get that energy flowing through the whole crowd. Right. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like my mentality and what I've passed on to with, you know, to the guys in the band, it's like, yo, like there has to be a presence. We have to be, you know, not necessarily crazy, but you want to look like you're happy to be on stage and you're enjoying playing your own songs and people, you know, they reciprocate that they, they, they can tell when someone's having fun when they're, and when they're not having fun. Oh, yeah, you can definitely tell when a band member is up there playing, and they would rather be anywhere else than there, where they're just, you know, yeah, you know, like that, that fucking half there, and it's like I don't, I don't really want to see y'all anymore, you know. Yeah. If you can't put on a good show, it's you know, it doesn't matter how good your music is or you know how talented y'all are. If you can't get me pumped when I've just paid twenty dollars to see you live, it's like right. y'all, right. uh, y'all suck now. Kind of yeah, and. I that's the thing too like i mean fuck man so there, sometimes it gets a little wild like at one of our last shows um in la uh mel and i were like running across the stage and like i guess he must have like swung around and hit me right in the chin with this with the with this bass and like i was like bleeding everywhere i'm like dude that was crazy man i didn't even know like i didn't know i was bleeding until like after the fact when the pictures started coming out and i was like oh shit like that dude straight up not clocked me right in the chin, man. So right. it was fun, man. You just got to get wild and, you know, give people a good time. Yeah. And talk about playing or singing music that you enjoy playing. Um, one of your songs, and it's probably one of my favorites, um, Civilization is Dying. Right. You cover, you cover that song. And as far as covers go, you know, most cover bands suck. Yeah. Uh, I think like the first one again and again are probably the only really good ones. Uh, most cover songs really suck. Um, but every now and then you get a good one and it's I would go out of a limb and say that your version is better than the original. And there's only a couple 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 cover songs that are actually better than the original, like, you know, Johnny Cash and right. things like that. But uh when I hear y'all play it, it's like you're so excited. You can like hear it in your right. voice that you're just like so excited to be playing this song right. that you obviously liked so much that you wanted to yeah. cover it. Right. Um, as compared to when they sing it, because they wrote it, so obviously they feel what they wrote. Right. But it's like you get that passion that of the writer, but also as the fan of the song. So it gives you like that extra excitement. Yeah. Yeah. So you can definitely hear that in that song. I. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's, no, that's I, definitely I, a good one. I love I love that song. I love the Zero Boys. They're a great, like, fucking amazing band. An amazing influence for me and, like, the music in our band. It, it, it goes so well, and you could hear the influence in a lot of the songs. Um, I mean, recording that song was fucking crazy, man, because... I think it was like a one take on vocals and I was like, Oh, I don't know. I don't think I like it. And everyone's like, dude, that shit sounds good. You're not going to be able to like replicate the way that one came out. And yeah. sure enough, I mean, I tried it again and it was that first take was, was gold, man. So, it, and, it, and it's fun to play on stage. It's super fun. Yeah. Did, uh, how do you go about covering a song? So like if a band wanted to cover, like if somebody wanted to cover one of your songs and they did like a really good job of it and it started, you know, getting a lot of plays, what is that like flattery or does like the record labels sort of, you know, I know Weird Al gets away with it because of, you know, uh, constitutional rights, right. but as far as like straight covering. Um, so 
I guess it all depends, right? Like for the Zero Boys, out of respect, uh, um, you know, for their music and their working artists and, uh, you know, I reached out to a friend of mine who is in direct contact with them and I was like, hey, you think you could help me out? I need to get a hold of these guys because I want to use their music and, you know, I don't want it to be a surprise if it starts to get attention like the way it has. Mm -hmm. uh, because it gathered enough attention that they were like, holy shit, dude, you guys did a really good fucking job. So we're really happy that you we, we said yes. Uh, so I reached out and, you know, I wrote an email and I was like, hey, guys, you know, I want to know if it's okay if we use your song, you know, on our album. You know, it's going to be on digital play. They're like, yeah, man, just give us credit, you know, as long as you put us down that, you know, we wrote it and we performed it and whatnot, then we're all good. And so we did, and, you know, I sent him a copy, and he, they were just like, wow, sounds great. Like, really, really yeah. good. So, uh, yeah, same. I got a Facebook message from, I'm going to assume it was the original bass player, and he was just like, dude, I just came across your guys' version of our song, and he was just like, holy shit, like, that sounds phenomenal like i'm super happy and proud that you guys did that and made it sound the way it does um so yeah we got a lot of kudos for that song and it you know it, it meant even more when it came from the original artist saying that you know we we, we did a great job yeah because i think it'd be a pretty good flattery when a really good band asks to play one of your songs i mean i'm, I'm not in a band i've never been in a band so i don't really know a lot of how band workings go on so you know it's good questions for me but i would assume that that's you know a pretty good form of flattery i mean even if weird al made fun of me you yeah. know i would think that'd be pretty <laughs> cool like i'd want a weird al song you know i don't know why people got like i mean coolio got all pissed off about that back in the day you know um but you know 20 years later it was like one of the best things that could have happened for coolio's career right, right. Um, just having just having weird al do a cover so yeah um, and i think that, that's the other thing too it's like you you're gonna get you're gonna gain something from it no matter you know unless it's a horrible job you know and you're like oh fuck this sounds like shit fucking yeah but then ass. nobody's really gonna hear right. it right oh so, i don't know about that have you heard um you know the fairy tale of new york by the pogues yeah okay um what's his name did a cover of that uh, uh contemporary singer i can't even remember his name um do you know what <laughs> talking about no no i haven't heard it um if somebody can look that up and put it in the comments it is the worst horrible cover i mean he murdered they murdered that song <laughs> and it got millions and millions of plays um yeah fairytale new york uh i can't even remember the artist's name but right. somebody put it in the comments i'll catch it but anyway so but yeah no uh that is a smack good good song of y'all's uh I, I really i really like that um let's see oh something else i did want to bring up that i don't know if it's going to get cut from the copy uh we talk about uh Brittany um from oil changes heart surgery fund right. um she does have a cash app it's cash app symbol and her name capital letters in the first and last name um if everybody that watches this video sends one dollar it would really really help her out uh you have a dollar and a good heart she has no dollar and a not so good heart so we can all give her a dollar and if everybody does it it'd make her a lot of money punk support punks yeah so yeah. if you don't you're a poser right exactly. i will start start the crusade as soon as we get off the show yep. <laughs> um so anyway so what else is going on with dead 77 uh, uh so we wrapped up um a pre-production on a single that we're supposed to be going into the studio for hopefully at the beginning of next year uh, with Paul Miner at Buzz Bomb Studios. Uh, super excited. I, I love what it's developed into. We still have a couple things that we need to add to it, um, but I did throw like a little teaser video on the band's page. Uh, can't hear too much, but you know, if you, if you perk your ear to it, you'll, you'll, you'll get the, the gist of the song. Um, touring. I mean, we're going to be on the East Coast. I will be in the, on the East Coast. We'll be in the East Coast in January. And then we will be back shortly after we get back from Europe. 
um, we have a couple festivals that we're working with and hopefully you know if one of them works out or maybe they both work out then we'll be out there for an extended period of time um, just to make sure we get full worth of being on the east coast and um, you know just because we've been getting a lot of you know messages saying hey when are you guys coming out this mm -hmm. way when are you guys coming out this way so i'm like fuck dude okay well if we're going out there for one festival we might as well hit up the surrounding cities or you know whatever surrounding states are nearby and you know make our appearance um but yeah definitely new single um shop the fuck out of that thing like crazy um tour europe 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 is where you know we're super excited for um that'll probably be i mean it's exciting because it's our first official european tour mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah like i said we got our agent is i've heard nothing but good things from the other bands on the roster and you know he's working hard to put everything together and he's doing a great job i mean fuck to be able to convince fest to book a band that is from the u.s and generally hasn't ever been to europe except for rebellion you know it's he's doing a good job yeah and we're super happy to be part of city rat um they they've been super great um uh, so far and we're excited to continue continue to work with them after the fact you know yeah. um, but hopefully our tour goes well and then we'll be back in europe shortly after that you know got to keep the train going yeah, I definitely, like, I can't say enough. I, I want to go to Europe so bad, like, even, like, just hitting up, because there's a bunch of festivals out there all within, like, a month period of right. time. Like, there's something like Oifest in Germany, you know, so just going out. Because if you're going to go, you might as well go for three weeks. Because it's, right. like, to go for a week by the time you get over jet lag, all the tour tourist suggestion books that I've read um, all said, you know, go for at least three weeks, get yep. your money's worth. Yep. Because uh, you can get like transportation cards that are like super cheap, where you can ride the rail. Because public transportation over there is like good. Right. It's not like you know in America where most cities public transportation kind of sucks. Right. Um, so it's super cheap to get around if you're going to be there for, for a minute. So I want to go over there and maybe you know hit up a couple festivals, follow a band around. Right. I don't know, just kind of fucking bum yeah. Europe and see the sights yeah. for a week. Yeah. Um, that I'm looking forward to man maybe not showering for a couple days uh, you know we do like i said we have a couple places uh, we're confirmed for three festivals so far uh, we get to make our appearance in italy too so that's fucking awesome uh, and Any right festivals that you're confirmed for can you say what they are or they yeah you haven't so been we have rebellion um we have back to future in eastern germany um, and then right now we are also on DLB Festival, and that's in Italy. Um, hasn't yet been announced, but it should be shortly. I think announcement start in December, uh, at the end of this month. So um, things should start popping up. Actually, I think tomorrow at noon is when they, or their, noon their time is when they start announcements. Um, so those are the three confirmed. And then I know we had someone reach out about playing Rome. Um, so that's probably in the works as well. So, nice. so it'll, it'll be, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be the Coliseum, right? Yeah. That would be fucking sweet, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of planning going on. I kind of, I'll just, you know, write our, our agent a little message and I'll be like, Hey man, did you get confirmation on this or that? And, um, so we're still, you know, I, I try not to bug them too much, but I'm like, it's like those first time jitters where you're like, Ooh, I wonder what's going on in the background. Just let me know, you know, give me a hint. All right. Uh, but he's been great. They, the, uh, the agency has been great. Um, I'm just, I'm super excited to be working with them. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, uh, I hope I get to meet them when I yeah. come over. So, um, a question, a, a funny question, cause I put on host bands and put on shows when you go to all these different cities and work with different promoters, what are, things that you appreciate that people do and sometimes don't do or things that are expected that aren't done or bonuses they give you, um, you know, just like little things that may really make you feel welcome and appreciated as a band. Um, 
I think as far as like the U.S. or Europe or in gen or in general as a band, what do you look for when you work with somebody that brings you out and puts you on a show? So just to see if they're going to take care of us, right? Like just the common hospitality stuff. Like, hey, do you guys need a place to stay? Which we obviously do. Um, those kind of things, right? Like those those are like the biggest things. Like, hey, you know, what can I what can I do for you guys to like make it easier? You know, and usually we don't, I mean, dude, we don't really ask for much, you know, as long as we can get a hotel, um, you know, we don't really even ask for food, but usually it's like, oh, well, as long as we can get a room, we're good, you know? Yeah. Uh, we just, you know, also like the your word, right? Like if you're saying, hey, like, okay, well, this show's going to pay out this much, you know, and we're like, well, you know, we need this X amount you know, that's not going to work. And you're like, okay, cool. Yeah, let's do it. But then when we get there and everything's said and done, you stick with the old, you know, Ray, it's kind of like, okay, dude, you, you, you could have just paid us the additional fucking 50 bucks. It's not going to kill you, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's just like things like that, you know? Um, I think the other thing too is like taking into consideration, uh, time slots, I guess, like mm -hmm. you're offering us a spot and you know that we're either going to draw a little bit better or we're going to put on a better performance, then, you know, that's also like, okay, well, it's just to say like, oh, you guys will play at this time because I know that your performance is up to whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things. Um, but we're, I mean, us as, as the band, we're really easy to work with, man it's it's yeah i've i've definitely gotten that experience working with y'all so yeah, anybody watching they're they're great to deal with uh, yeah. me personally i always like think of because i have a lot of friends that are in bands and they tell me like when i go on tour you know this fucker in this city did this or right. you know oh man i really remembered this place because the guy there was so nice so i mean typically when bands come into atlanta i try to like take into consideration like getting to them from the airport coming from the venue because yeah. like seeing bands at other festivals it's like oh well we're out of here we're ubering back to the hotel which is you know 30 minutes away and then they have to uber back to the the airport the next day and it's like well you know five guys in gear you need an uber van so like if you're getting paid 350 bucks to play a show and you spend four hundred dollars on ubers while you're there right that, that's it's kind of hustling backwards right. you know right exactly Exactly. Yeah, no, and that's really appreciated, man. That's fucking awesome. Just the fact that you can pick up artists from the airport and then you, you know, drive them to the room. And then I, you know, the other thing you did last year was like, I think you'd mentioned that you had gotten the hotels so close to the venue so no one would really have to Uber anyway. Yeah. So that, that's the fucking time saver, you know? And you're kind of like, no one's drinking and really driving. So, uh, you know, you're hitting a lot of good good marks with you know people not getting into trouble or spending x amount of money to drive back and forth um so that really helps out yeah my arm's getting tired of me doing this in a <laughs> little, little little rigged up little rigged up studio for today um jason will be back in two weeks after the holidays with regular scheduled punk rock talk <laughs> i am just filling in for him for today for those who have joined um and Yes, I forgot what we were just talking about. Oh, your oh yes, hospitality and how you treat how you should treat bands. Because um, funny, like I, since I was thirteen, my my I have an older sister who was into punk rock. So since I was thirteen, like bands have been crashing at my house right. and staying over there, like blank seventy seven. Like they were after they played Atlanta, they came back to our house and we partied and. Funny, Mike Blanks passed out on the floor, and he woke up duct taped to the floor, you know. And so that was that was how I met Mike Blanks, and it's carried on to a you know lifelong lifelong friendship. And they're great people. So I mean, that's one of the best things I like about meeting bands is you know you get to meet people that you like, you make good friends, and it's, right. it's like especially when you meet the bands and they turn out to be super cool people. The music 
seems to be yeah. even better. Right, right. I don't know if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Like you meet your idols, and it's like and when I'm at like the Misfits, they're kind of dicks. Right. After you meet them in person, you kind of like their music a little less. I mean, they're still the Misfits and great, but it's like God, I wish y'all were, you know, not dickheads, little right. kids. <laughs> Yeah, I think you you know being humble is great, man. I mean, I you know even from our Instagram, like I, we don't mind following people. Like I don't know why that's such a big deal. I've never gotten the the point. I mean, at this point, it's gotten to the point where like I, I just can't keep up with everyone that adds us. But I I try, man. And like to me, it's like you know if you want to be involved with the with us it's only fair that we're involved with you as well. You know, um, I think as an artist, you, there shouldn't, I don't, you shouldn't build a wall between you and the people who are supporting you, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so for me, it's like, I want to be involved with everyone. You know, I want to say hi to everyone. I want to talk to people. I want to get to know them. Um, and I think that just kind of makes people feel warm and fuzzy and they're like, Oh, you know, these guys were really great. They didn't, you know, they didn't run off or, or avoid a conversation with someone that just watched them, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah. Being humble is like the number one for, for us. And, and the band is, you know, be nice to everyone, treat, treat others the way you want to be treated. Uh, because I've been in that situation where you're like, you meet someone that you're like, Oh fuck dude. And then they're just kind of fucking write you off. And you're like, Oh, you're a dick. Well, yeah. I guess yeah, I'm not going to name names, but that, that happened to me within the past year. I got to meet a band that I've, you know, was like, have idolized for a long right. time. And they were like, not nice or cool people right. at all. And then it's like, then they come on the radio and I'm like, skip, you know, it's just yeah. instant. It's just like, skip, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll listen to this. And, you know, that's going to be great. You know, I just skip <laughs> whoever else, you know. Right. And it's kind of it's kind of a letdown as a fan, like when you're like, "Hey, you know, you're great," and they're, they're like, "Fuck right. you," and walk away. Oh, right. yeah, okay, cool. Well, I won't be buying your shit anymore. So, right. Right. Um, looks like we do have some questions here. I think it is time to move that. All right. Um, Kurt from Dismantle, what's up, Kurt? Oh. Woo! Right. Um, he says, "Damn, damn, you already answered my previous questions, which I probably should have read this before I read it out loud." Any bands that you plan to tour with on the East Coast? Or while you're in Europe? Good question. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so for Europe, I... Here's your chance to like say something like you want to play with and maybe it'll get back to them and they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of bands that we want to play with, right? It's like free free game out there when, when we're going out there because everyone's on tour next year. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I'm just going to put it out there. Like we would be happy to tour with any band, honestly. Um, if they have that energy, you know, if you're like TSOL, who's one of our big, one of my biggest influences, uh, good riddance is another one. I mean, those guys are phenomenal. Um, so many bands like are going to be out there at the same time that it, it would be great. You know, if they said, Hey, you know, backline us we'll fucking take you a fucking fuck yeah dude let's do it yeah you know anybody knows anybody in tsol yeah. hit them up uh, dead 77 uh, that'd be a great fucking that'd be a great show i'm not gonna lie tsol dead 77 a couple of little local you know french bands or german bands that you yeah, know I mean, local, we, local openers uh, a, a band that totally blew me away um uh, we played with them in portland was uh uh, Lion's Law. Um, oh yeah, they were f fucking phenomenal, man. Like, I was just like, holy shit, that's another band that I would love to definitely tour with. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if anyone, while we're out there, fucking hit us up, you know. Yeah. Uh, right now, I don't know what is the exact plan. I know that we're probably going to do some headlining tours and then obviously the festivals and i've kind of already told uh stefan you know if there's something that's you know anything that's an opportunity for us you know whether we take a loss or we don't um let's do it you know if if it's something that's like oh shit like 
hey, dude, you guys will get to fucking play with the circle jerks, but, you know, you might not get that much money. Dude, I don't give a fuck. Right. Like, that opens the door for even more fans. Like, it, it, you know, the, let's fucking do it. You know, let's let's do whatever. For me, it's let's do whatever is going to help the band grow and expand, right? Uh, so if any band out there, even in the U.S., I mean, any band, like the guys, we've already spoken about it, you know, as long as we're making, you know, some type of sustainable money to be on the road, we're willing to backline a headliner. That's that's not a problem to us because we know that the end game of it is that our band's going to grow and expand, you know? And how else is a band like ours or any of any other band going to grow if the older bands that are already in it, you know, there has to be a lending hand somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's how the mm -hmm. thing's grown. Yeah, everyone works to get to a certain point, but there's always someone there to say, hey, let me help you out, dude. Let me get you on this or, you know, let's help each other out, right? Because that's, that's how the scene works. You're helping each other out some way, somehow. And uh, I think that's like kind of like what would help us too is like, oh, well, you know, this band says they want to, you know, go on tour with you guys. Fucking sweet. You know, what, what, what are the terms? You know, oh, well, they need a backline. Okay, cool. Fuck it, dude. I don't care. As long as, you know, we're getting paid a little bit of money to be on the road and it's sustain sustaining the band on the road, fucking perfect, dude. The rest will come mm -hmm. in merch, you know? Um, so, yeah, man, we're open to to any fucking big headliner, honestly. It's, it, it'd be, it's like, it's almost like a dream come true, right? When a band, a big band, you know, it's like, oh, we want to take you on tour. You're like, okay, fuck yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. any, honestly, any band, you know, we got to do that run with the Crow Mags right before COVID. Like, that was a fucking, that's a dream come true in itself, you know. So uh, we're definitely open to to anything that works, you know. Like I said, yeah. we're, well, not, we're not a hard, we're not a hard band to work with. And, you know, if, if if the you know if we can make enough money to sustain ourselves during the tour that's that's what we need you yeah know? well let's put it out in the universe for dead 77 and tsol somewhere in europe yeah, in 2023 i i foresee that happening and well, i think i think we should make actually, it happen they're actually so we get to share the stage with them at back to future oh. and rebellion but i don't i don't know what day they're playing at rebellion so uh, but we will be on the road together. So we'll, that's, be that's, Europe, that's, we'll be in Europe together playing a couple of the festivals together. So that's exciting. All right. Got, got another question from VINCXLS. Vinny, uh, what is your favorite place to play? I guess favorite place to play. Yeah, I guess your favorite place you've ever performed venue wise i would think uh so i would say i mean nothing beats the rebellion stage so far yeah. but next year might be different i want to say for for this pre previous year it was definitely the stage we got to play at rebellion um it was super great uh, lights the sound everything was fucking you know just it was what it needed to be. Um, mm. Let's see. State side. State side. I would have to say maybe three links in Dallas. And maybe that's just because it's so intimate and that the, that venue is just, I don't know. It, it means a lot to me because I have really close friends in Dallas. Mm -hmm. So, that definitely i never miss an opportunity to get to play three links in dallas so um, yeah actually that's actually one of the next questions is about a goth dungeon in texas <laughs> <laughs> you ready you ready for this one <laughs> all right that's from uh french kiss the clenched fist um have you ever been spanked in a goth dungeon in texas <laughs> yeah so 
I think we all got spanked. Yeah, rest in peace, Marcos. Yep, that's uh, that was our buddy uh, who who passed away. Uh, but yeah, he was man. I met I met Marcos, and it was like, man, that guy was like, we hit it off so quick. Um, but yeah, we were with Marcos, um, my buddy Jorge, and Corrupted Youth. We were on tour together, and um, somehow we ended up at some fucking goth club and everyone was so into getting fucking hey pretty much beat hey i've ended up at plenty of goth dungeons at the end <laughs> of the night you know i mean i have not been spanked in a goth dungeon in texas uh georgia and california and florida yes but yeah. never texas well, so it smacked it smacked different in texas dude it was <laughs> uh man they were going at it like it yeah, it got pretty bad, man. And then we ended up at that person's house, and everyone was still getting spanked. Yeah. So I was like, what the fuck is going on? So Yeah, you know, yeah. Spanking doesn't end after the goth club no, normally. It, it continues no, no. on until the sun comes up. Um, uh, a, a, a really good, like, go back to that uh, that tour is, um, so we got to, like, so we got to play threes with Corrupted Youth, which is across the street from Three Links. And um, I think... I don't know if it's still there now. I haven't been to that venue since 2000. I think we went on tour in 2017, but we got to, you know, um, Sharpie our name and tour on one of their bricks along with mm -hmm. the other bands that go on tour. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, I know I got a picture somewhere, somewhere out there. Did you see a lot of bands signed in on the brick that you're like, Oh, wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we were like, well, it, it was a lot. Of, I think there was a lot of a lot of bands on there, so we were like, oh, we got to do ours too. And it was like, corrupted youth, dead seventy seven, twenty seventeen. Um, but yeah, man, that was a really long fucking time ago. I gotta, I gotta definitely when I go on my next trip out there, and I gotta go in and take a look and see if it's still there. Yeah, you. Uh, uh, speaking of corrupted youth, y'all actually get to share the stage with them at Forty Fest. Not trying to keep bringing that up, but it is a important. That's the next big one, actually. So. Yeah um they they are great um i can't wait to see see them in atlanta as well shout out to nacho for everything he does out in california I, that that cy fest i mean i saw you at cy fest last year like the logistic nightmare of trying to do something that big yeah. gave me a headache trying to figure it out like <laughs> i'm over here in atlanta doing this you know 40 fest is kind of small compared to cy fest yeah, and after seeing that, it's like, oh my god, how how does he do this? This is massive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't, I don't know how. I that I don't mess with that world, man. It's fucking no. It, it was impressive. And I understand the logistics behind all that, all the booking stuff. So, yeah, I definitely, I don't do it. Yeah, because I hope to have you know three, four, five hundred people at the skate park this year. Uh, the good thing about the skate park is there's really no max capacity because it is a huge, it used to be a steel mill warehouse. So there's like really no maximum capacity. So nice. I can sell an unlimited amount of tickets, but they did ask to like try to keep it in, within reason, within controllable things. Um, so yeah, I had to get an EMS and all that stuff signed up to come out and you know, basically build the sound system from scratch right. just for 40 first. Um, no, and so excited. it's, uh, I'm excited to play with, uh, with corrupted youth. It's been fuck years, man. I don't, I have bad memory, but I, I don't remember the last time we played together. It's oh yeah. My, my memory is shot. It's like, I have my timeline. It's like, what I remember 20 years yep. ago could be just as strong as, you know, five minutes ago. Right, right. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Um, oh, here's another Here's another one from BINCXLS. Um, who are y'all's biggest influences? Uh, shit, man. That one's, that one's, that's a good question. So, I will say, I can't speak on the guys. Um, I could speak on my biggest influences. Um, for me, I want to say, like I said before, TSOL is a big one. Um, Zero Boys is another big one. Um, as far as, you know, like the, 
if you like the newer punk rock, I wouldn't even call it new anymore because that was like early 2000s. So um, a lot of a global threat, a lot of Cliff 45. Um, there's a lot of influences, man. Complete Control. Um, I love those yeah. guys. I mean, I love all the bands. Like Clip 45 is great. Uh, TSO, you know, I like TSO too. I yeah. can't wait to see that. Yeah. Um, um, then you get into like the other stuff. Like um, I'm really into the Bleakness. Mm -hmm. They're a great band. Um, they're from Europe. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of different different influences for for all of us. Like I said, I can only speak to mine. The other guys, mm -hmm. they're into like their whole their own fucking world. Uh, uh, I do like I like hip hop a lot, um, so I listen to that. Uh, but yeah, a lot of a lot of early two thousand street punk and a lot of uh, you know Ramones, TSOL, um, a lot of seventy seven like the Vibrators. I love the briefs. There's just so many influences, man. And and honestly, mm -hmm. I just kind of pick at different ones and try to find a way to like incorporate it into our music. Um, yeah. And I think I think that's what's kind of helped the band, you know, in its sound and where it's going. Yeah. Um, so that was influences. Now I have a question, actually. That's kind of my new thing. So what is the artist that you don't want everybody to know that's on your playlist? What's your guilty pleasure? <laughs> Come on, spill um, the beans. What's, what's your guilty pleasure? Right now, what is my guilty pleasure? Right now. So, uh, okay. So <laughs> I've been Yeah, that one. Little... That's the one I want to know. So it, it isn't, it's not that bad. Sometimes I'll listen to some weird like pop shit, like uh, like I'll slap on like the Backstreet Boys for some fucking mm -hmm. weird reason, just because I want to feel like I'm in middle school or high school again. Um, but like honestly, it's mostly like fuck. I had this thing where I was just listening to Bad Bunny for the longest time, and that's really like my, my guilty pleasure, man. And sometimes like pop shit, like. I'll listen to NSYNC or Backstreet Boys or some fucking weird shit like that. I'm like, why am I listening to this right now? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yep. I mean, those are, um, definitely hip hop. I guess if it's a guilty pleasure, I listen to like YG and uh, Runzo and just newer, newer artists, you know? Yeah. Well, I li like a lot of rap, uh, like 90s rap and hip hop like Wu Tang. Right. Um a lot Atlanta has a lot of rap. Um, you know, so I grew up, you know, with Goody Mob, um, Andre two thousand playing locally before they got famous, right. you know, at the club that served alcohol to pretty much anybody. So like, um, you know, Ludacris, you could see him walking down down the street corner before he got super famous filming his videos and yeah, doing his crazy awesome. stuff just down the streets because we got, like, really big hip-hop culture in Atlanta. Yeah. So um, me, yesterday, I was listening to – you ever play Assassin's Creed? Do you play video games at all? Uh, Yeah, but I, I think I only played the Valhalla one. Oh. Okay, so there's one where it's like you're pirates, oh, yeah, yeah. and they have like yeah, while you're driving the pirate, they have like the sea shanties, and for right. some reason Spotify let me down this rabbit hole to where I was <laughs> driving around listening to pirate sea shanties <laughs> at full volume, and people in adjoining cars are looking over like, what the fuck, you know, <laughs> listening to what do you do with a drunken sailor at full right. volume? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was, yeah. That was that was mine the other day. That's awesome. um, well. We are starting to get close to that time. Uh, I'm trying to keep it for an hour instead of two hours like last time you were on here. Um, do you have any shout outs? Um, uh, uh, shout outs to um, I know I saw a couple people comment and I didn't get to say anything, but uh, shout outs to everyone that dropped a comment. Uh, thank you for joining in and listening. Um, Shout out to David Hernandez. He's a great friend of mine, a uh, great mentor. Uh, shout out to the guys in the band, uh, you know, because they, if it wasn't for them, you know, the band wouldn't operate the way it does. Uh, yeah, shout out to everyone that's supporting the album. That's what it was. 
So I saw someone say they bought the album at a benefit. Um, so, so thank you. Thank you to everyone that's, you know, purchased the album or streams it. Honestly, I I know that Spotify is like, it, it's evil corporate. Artists. Yeah, I, I know it sucks for artists, but people, agents, promoters, whatever, whatnot, more than half of them are going off of your streams, which is just the world we live in. So, you know, the more you I mean, up, but no, I mean that is how I kind that is how I found yeah. you uh, a while back was was my Spotify because I do a lot of driving, right? And Spotify works when you drive and text and be on the phone at the same right. time. Um, whereas like YouTube shuts off when you do anything else and you can't use maps at the same time yeah. while Spotify just plays in the background. It's great for working out of a vehicle. So like a lot of the bands that I discovered after my new freedom, I found when Spotify came out, I was like, it just right. led me down this long rabbit hole and finding yeah. weird bands from my past, like bomb squadron, like, right. I found them on Spotify and I was like, man, I remember seeing this band in Atlanta right in like 98 and that was the only time i ever heard the music and i think i might have had a, a, a cassette tape for a couple years after that but that you know i mean that was you know 20 something years ago so yeah. you lost that so it was a good way to refine um an old band yeah. um uh, another question before we let you go uh your music is available not just on streaming on spotify i know we can buy stuff from dismantled records yep um he dropped a comment earlier where else is your music available so you can, and how do we get hard copies so you can order copies on dead77band.com we do have under the music tab of our website you can order the cd or the vinyl version of our album um Anything helps, you know, you're supporting us. Uh, you know, if you want to, you know, know, it, know that my ass is driving that shit to the fucking post office to ship, you know, even better, you know, so it, it just put it that way. If you do order an LP or a CD, it's me driving that shit down to the post office. And, you know, that, that means the world to me because, you know, as much as I have to get in my car and drive to drop it off, it just means that, it, it makes me so happy to look at my emails and it's like, Oh, you have an order. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, you know, dead 77 band.com um, stream us anywhere. Add us to your playlist. Like I said, that helps immensely, especially if you're trying to get us out, out of the West coast. If you're on the East coast, Midwest, wherever those streams help us with leverage with promoters you know uh, yeah because your, your spotify as a band i believe it actually shows where people are listening to you and where your most streams are coming from right. and can give you a lot of data for as far as tracking um where you should probably go as a band i mean right. that's like basically a roadmap of america on when I go on tour, what cities do I need to do? I don't have a band, so I don't see what it looks like from Spotify, but I'm kind of given the basic rundown of right. it. Um, so it seems like it would be a really valuable tool to have yeah. Spotify. Yeah, it, 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 it helps. It definitely does help. And like I said, if you guys have it, add us to your playlist, listen to our radio, whatever. I mean, even a follow. Everything helps. Um, yeah. You know, so like I said, it anything record cd dead 77 band.com um or you know if that's too much you could always message us on the band's um instagram all right jeff, uh, jeff asked same deal with apple music too i yeah, don't same, use apple so same thing with apple music everything everything helps uh, like i said it, it it's just the world that we live in now yeah um, I didn't understand it at first when we first started. And then, you know, the more and more we started playing shows, it was like, oh, well, let's see your numbers and blah, blah. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, shit, he's right. It's fucking numbers. Like, it's a numbers game. So uh, if, yeah. you, if you do enjoy our music, like wholeheartedly enjoy the album, enjoy our music, um, follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, 
you know, wherever you stream us from, add us to a playlist, you know, just keep, keep our music circulating. Mm -hmm. um, because not only does it help us with shows, but it also helps us as a band, you know, expand the, the audience. Yeah. Do you know off the top of your head where you're getting your most streams from by chance? Oh, you didn't do your homework. No, I haven't <laughs> checked. I haven't checked. Um, I haven't really been keeping an eye on it, but it, I don't know. We have a lot of hits right now in across, across the pond, man. Uh, really? So yeah, that's our, that's our biggest shooter right now is, is definitely across the pond and, um, so that's good. That's good. Any, any, any streams we get is good. Um, and I've even seen places like, I mean, I've seen Australia on there. Uh, and, and that kind of makes sense. Cause we ran into a few Australians in at rebellion and they were like, Oh, we're going to fucking play you guys like crazy. I was like, okay, cool. I mean, they stuck to their word. I, Australia always comes up on our, on our, on our, uh, on our data sheet. So, mm -hmm. oh, we, we would love to come to Indonesia. So yeah. yeah. That would, that would be fucking great. Dude, I have seen some videos and pictures of some of the things that come out of Indonesia. Dude, I want to go there so bad that they fucking go hard, dude. It's they like do. fucking wow. Yeah. Yeah. We, do. we would, we would love to come out there. Uh, like I said, it's, it's open game wherever you guys want to see us. It takes one message you know, via Instagram and email. I mean, you could reach us via email on the band's, um, on our, on our band's website. Um, uh, and just say, Hey, I want you guys, you know, just have a plan for us. And yeah, that, that's, that's how I do it. I just start messaging my favorite bands. Like, Hey man, y'all want to come play my shitty punk rock show in Atlanta? <laughs> you know, you know I'll, I'll take care of you. I can't offer you, I can't offer you the world, but it'll be a fun time, you right. know? And funny, everybody but, like, two said yes when yeah. I've asked. And those were like, oh, we have medical problems, mm -hmm. and, oh, we just hate each other. So, right. you know, so it's like, wow, you know. Yeah. It's really easy to get a punk rock band to come to your city. It you is. Like I, a honestly, like, if you can offer us some type of compensation and a place to sleep, that's usually going to get the ball rolling, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's beer and peanuts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like accommodations are the biggest sellers, man. Accommodations. And like I said, no matter what an artist needs to be paid because mm -hmm. it costs money to be on the road. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, not, it's not fucking free and it's not fucking free in the times that we're in now. Uh, yeah. Everything's fucking super expensive. So, a band really does appreciate the fact when, you know, someone says, well, Hey, I can pay you X amount, you know, and you're like, cool. I don't have to fight you. Cause you're being, being honest and you're being upfront. And you're like, Hey, this is what I can offer you. You know, this is my final deal. It's like, all right, cool. You know? Uh, so. David, uh, what's that? Will the taco man be <laughs> at the skate park? You like, what's up, man? Hey, um, so I've tried getting a hold of the taco man. He was talking about the guy that did the tacos last year. Um, and somebody said he's in jail. So taco <laughs> man locked up, you know, so I can show some love for the homie down the road. Um, if he's not in jail, yeah, definitely I'll have the taco man back. But I, I can't get a hold of him. So there will be some tacos and there will be vegan options as well. Uh, vegan coffee, vegan food, and as well as regular meat food. Uh, for the rest of the world no. um, and it's all really good food so oh we're super definitely. i'm super excited for in atlanta man it's almost a it'll be like a family reunion for us as well because our original guitar players from chat well he moved to chattanooga so it was like a bummer when we didn't make it last year too because he's like dude i was fucking ready to be there man i was like fuck man so we're super stoked just to be able to have <laughs> you're supposed to put your questions your comments in the little circle thing so i can really make it big on the screen yeah <laughs> he, did, he ain't lying <laughs> right no wow uh, 
so yeah, we're excited for for Forty Fest. Uh, the lineup's gonna be killer. Um, it's gonna be great to share the stage with Cheap Sex and Corrupted Youth. Uh, uh, also, because originally we were all part of the Evacuate Records in the early year when we in the early years when we started back in sixteen. Um, Mike Byers put out our first EP on Evacuate. Uh, so it's kind of cool to get you know get to share the stage with those guys and. Um, you know, cheap sex being definitely one of the one of our influences as well with uh, launch off to war when you know that record came out, it was fucking phenomenal, man. Um, just hearing that 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 album and how much power and aggression it had, it was just like fuck. I want to start a band now too. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is this the uh, first time you'll share the stage with cheap sex? No, it won't be the first time, but it'll be the first time in a really long time. Yeah, so it, it, it's it's really awesome. I'm looking forward. I bet that's I bet that's super cool to be able to play with one of your influence bands. Like like when you play with TSL, this this you know in Europe yeah. for going tour with them, we're putting that out in yeah. the universe. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be super cool. So. Oh no, it's always yeah. It's it to to me, man. It's like it's just so. <sighs> Uh, I wouldn't almost like an achievement, you know, like, it's just like, it feels so like, it, it's, it's like you're, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just a feeling like, wow, like, I'm really here. I'm really sharing the stage with these guys who I grew up in the crowd watching. And now I'm on the stage with them and we get to share that, that, that same, you know, I, I don't know, dude, it's just, yeah. Like going through well, I mean, y'all, y'all keep uh, going as a band. Maybe one day you, the bands you idolize will be opening up for you. And then what's that like? Like, oh, Rancid is opening for me. You know, <laughs> that'd be fucking crazy, man. Yeah. No, but yeah, yeah. I w yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful for everything. Um, super humble, humbled by the opportunities. Uh, if it wasn't for the people who listen to our music, we wouldn't be going anywhere, you know? So yeah. we, we appreciate and love everyone that has given us a chance and listened to our music and continues to support our music. Um, and like I said, there's no, there's no attitudes in our band. There's no, you know, we're, I'm very humble. Uh, if you ever want to have a conversation with me, I'm more than, willing to have one with you and you know i think that's the way it should be you know no one's better than yeah. anybody else all right. all right um so before we wrap it up do you have any other shout outs or anything you want to say to anybody that's out there uh no just a big thank you to everyone man uh big thank you to everyone that supported us who keeps supporting us and uh, you know if if you guys you know, like I said, continue going to the shows. That would be great. At some point, yeah. we will get we will get to sing along level because that's where we want to get to. Fucking sing along level. Yeah. So, yeah. To to right me, on. that that's the, that's the that's the uh, ultimate fucking achievement goal is, you know, the crowd singing back. You know, so. Well, Hopefully we do have a fair number of fans in Atlanta, so hopefully you will definitely have a lot of people singing along. Oh. Um, Atlanta is a very hands-on city. There will be a lot of people jumping up on stage, so Ooh, yeah. be, be prepared for that. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to do a couple shout-outs, if you yeah. don't mind. Um, Atlanta bands, Strike First, Rotten Stitches, Hanging Judge, Billy Bats, Antagonizers, ATL, um, Triangle Fire, Strike First, Right there, they got an album out again with this Mental Records. You can go get it there. Great band. So, and yeah, I think that's going to about end up me ruining the ratings for Jason <laughs> with my with my rigged up little studio and not being prepared at all because I like I didn't I didn't have as much time after in between me getting home from work because. You know, I get off at five and then I got to drive. So I thought I'd have more time today, like actually set something up. And then I was going to do it in my truck. And then it got dark because of, you know, time change. So now I'm like in my truck and I was like, <laughs> it was like so dark. 
couldn't do it in, in, in there, so I had to run and throw a sheet over something and <laughs> duck underneath it with a flashlight. <laughs> but, hey, the punk rock, right? It fucking worked. We had yeah. a good time. So, oh, all right. <laughs> so, I'm going to play, as soon as I get my other phone to work, because I'm, again, rigging this, I'm going to play us out with uh, my, one of my favorites, The All Civilization is Dying. Um and if you want to see Dead 77, come on down to 40 Fest in Atlanta. There's still a few tickets available. Yeah. Discount for everybody. Or come with me and go to Europe and go see them at Rebellion yeah. Fest. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fucking cool as shit. Have a following come and seeing you to a foreign country. That would be fun. Um, if you're on Rebellion Fest staff, you should definitely get Rotten Stitches from Atlanta on Rebellion Fest because they fucking deserve it and we'll draw like fucking Europe. But anyway, enough for my rant to play us out. Here is Civilization is Dying by Dead77. Peace out, man. Bye.